Hey folks, welcome back. So last time we experimented with this joint-based uh, crane, and we made this weird, weird thing where you can you can sort of lift up vehicles using uh, a body which is attached to the the main uh, vehicle, so the mother vehicle, and we basically got it to a point where you can you can move this thing around in in vehicle local space essentially uh, which means that you can you can also just move it underneath other vehicles and then lift them up into the air and uh, you can also do things like this where you can essentially uh, get the whole get the whole mother vehicle to fall on its side because the forces involved are so large, are so strong. And uh, in this part, we will continue with this, and we will we will add a sort of cable to this object. So this this guy here, this uh, hovering hovering object here in the air, this is supposed to be sort of like the 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 end of the crane arm, if you will, and uh, and so you can imagine the crane ending where that object is, and there being like a, a, a cable uh, attached to it, and at the end of the cable is some sort of magnet which allows us to move things around. Uh, and uh, yeah, currently we're 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 only seeing seeing these f uh, physics visualizations because we're, we're still sort of trying to see to to figure out if this is actually like a, a sensible way to to set this up from a physics perspective before adding any meshes meshes or anything like that but let's let's actually just jump right into it and we are still in C++ here because uh, like I mentioned last time don't have all of these APIs available on the on the uh, on the Zig side yet. So let me see where are we here in this. Where are we here in this? Uh, 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 uh. No, that's not what I want. Right. Okay. So, <clears throat> actually, we'll jump quickly into into Sig just a little bit uh, and set up the input because we added uh, some inputs on the Sig side last time because we're, we're registering essentially all of the inputs for everything now on the Sig side. We can still use them from the C plus plus side, and we will have one more input added here. So we'll have the uh, Proto crane uh, toggle, right? Or should we call it like the magnet toggle or something? Proto crane magnet toggle. And the magnet toggle is uh, is an action, right? Because the magnet toggle essentially turns the magnet for the crane on or off. Uh, that's an action, like so. These other things are states, which allows us to to like see if an, if a button is held down, then we move the the crane in a certain direction. But the toggle is just an action, it's just something that is true for a single frame, and then it goes back to false. So well, <laughs> keep keep running const uh, when I should be running context. We'll map map this to the keyboard. Uh, input just like the, the other prototype crane inputs. And this is basis input key code. Let's let's put that to numpad five for example. Ah, oh, come on, numpad five. So it's in the, in the middle of the numpad, and the input context is the same. So it's vehicle driving controls. Right, 
And this is now everything we need on the zig side. So let's, let's build this. And that quite simply gives us the ability to read for this particular input on the C++ side. Let's make sure this succeeds. And there we go. Cool. So, um, let me have a quick look at my notes here. Uh, right, so we can probably actually read this in the same place that we read the other things. So here in pre-tick, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to really explain this component now because we looked at it in detail and we actually wrote most of this stuff uh, in the previous episode. So go have a look there if, if this looks unfamiliar to you. So we'll just add this to the list of game inputs. So proto crane magnet toggle and, and that would just be 287 then because that is 286. So obviously this is not how you're really supposed to do this because you're supposed to just stay on the zig side but, but uh, we don't have the joints on the zig side yet so uh, we have to prototype it on the C++ side for a bit longer. Right, so if if this uh, if we're toggling this this thing, um, let's go here to the header, and we can create a, a, a function for it here or method. Let's call it toggle uh, magnet. And obviously we don't have a magnet yet, so we'll need to put that in as well. But before we get to the magnet, we have the cable. And the cable is is kind of interesting and it can be actually kind of tricky to to hook up. So let's do that first. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so which one of these are we actually using? We're using shape, we're using rigid body dynamic. Not using spherical joint. Actually, what I think we will we will use the joint type we're going to use for the cable. I think is going to be a spherical spring joint because that allows us to to set some like stiffnesses and things like that on the on, on the cable. It's supposed to be like a, a steel cable, so it's kind of it's not like it's actually quite a, kind of stiff is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we are seen and we use the DOF6 joint, which is this arm end joint that we can move around. We'll also want to, when we actually hook up the magnet to whatever we want to lift, uh, we'll probably want a fixed joint for that. So let's, let's bring that in as well. And then I think we'll create, because we'll want to have a, a bunch of segments for the, for the cable. So we'll put in a cable segment struct here. And each segment will have a basis, physics, API, uh, we'll have a rigid body dynamic, uh, rigid body dynamic, pointer, so rigid body, uh, basis, physics, API, uh, shape, so shape, and basis, physics, API, spherical spring joint yes like so we could perhaps share the shape between all of them uh, it's probably going to be the same shape over and over again anyway but uh, but yeah I mean this is throw throwaway code uh, after all so you don't really need to need to worry about that um, We'll also want some some place to put these guys. Oh, that's that's not how you spell cable, cable segment. So we'll want to have um, let's do basis uh, vector and put the cable segments there, and just call this cable segments. All right. And then as the last one in the list. We'll want to have the magnet itself. So 
let's let's actually just copy these guys and we can go like m magnet rigid body right uh, and then m magnet shape and magnet joint right because we'll we, we need a joint to um, to hook it up to the the cable so I think that should be fine and then I can sort of already know that that we, we need the fixed joint here what do we call this so this is now the joint that actually attaches to the object that we want to lift and move around so let's call this like I don't know target joint or something like that all right so that's probably good. Let's make this full screen. We can get rid of that guy. And I'll bring this CPP file in on the other side. This is a pretty nice way of working when you're working in C++. And you're fleshing out a particular class. So. Uh, cable segments that can just be uninitialized for now. We'll, we'll just make these null, all of them. I think in modern C++ you can actually even initialize them in the header. I don't typically do that. It's just how I like to roll. And uh, yeah, so what is now the next next thing to do? Uh, well, we're already, we have this thing set up. So basically what we can do here is we can just call toggle magnet. And this obviously won't do anything yet, right? It's just empty. Uh, so basically all the rest of the stuff should go in the setup and the teardown. So we have create base physics here. We have destroy base physics and then we have toggle magnet. I think... I think pretty much everything should go in in this in these functions. Uh, so what do we start with? Maybe we should make make this shape a little a little smaller. Uh, it's it's actually kind of huge now. The the end of the arm. So let's make it like something like like that. So now it's like equally. It's like 0.4 wide and 0 0.4 high high because that's that's a radius obviously so that should be that should be pretty good and then and then we can have a look at what we're doing here so uh that we can probably take away and we're setting up the arm end rigid body with the rigid body description here um we're setting up the joint where we attach it to uh, to 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 the chassis, and then we're setting the arm end joints uh, like this these parameters so that we can move them around. So what we want to do after this is um, uh, how do we do this? How do we do this? We need to set up some 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 information for us uh, first of all. Things like how many segments do we want? So we can do that, first of all, do like a segment count is, uh, let's start with 10. Um, and then probably a float segment height. And uh, how high do we make them? Like 0.5 maybe? 0.6, something like that. They should be kind of thin, I I think. So let's make oh let's make segment uh what is it? radius because I'm I'm planning to use uh, actually capsules for these segments. Let's make them like 0 0.05 or something. We can always change this later. And uh, then we need a mass for them as well. So float segment mass and. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, th these things are typically you have to kind of experiment with these a little bit to get them get them correct. All right. We could of course make these these things be uh, 
hot values like we, we, we did previously with the speed, but of course we, we need to sort of recreate the thing. So I don't I don't know how how useful that is. And then we have this, this base local position. Maybe we should just move that like off off the vehicle to, to, to begin with. So it's just we can we can experiment with this cable since it's sort of hanging from the, the object. We'll just move the object to the right of the vehicle. I think that that should be a pretty good idea. All right. So what we can do here now then is um, we can do segment uh, yeah, cable segments and we re uh, not reserve but resize them to uh, segment count. And that allows us to do um, <clears throat> uh, to just iterate over them, right? So uh, segment count again, and I and maybe maybe I should be a uint thirty two iterating up until a uint thirty two, and uh, we can do a cable segment seg uh, segment and cable segments I. Right, and what we actually want to do here now is kind of the same thing we want to do for for the for the end of the arm, the arm end shape. Uh, we want to create the shape, we want to create the rigid body, and then we want to create um, a joint for it. So, uh, 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 uh. hmm, maybe I'll actually maybe I'll just do this. This is not perhaps super interesting content. So maybe I'll just do this and then uh, I'll get back to you when I have have something to show and then we can go to go through it together. Uh, yeah, let's do that. All right, and we're back. So this is what I came up with. I actually I added one more const uh, here. So the magnet thickness, essentially like how how thick the, the magnet at the end of the cable is. Uh, so we have all of these nicely in one place. So, <clears throat> so what, we, what we do here is um, we have the position of the arm end rigid body and we calculate the bottom of the current segment essentially. Uh, and, and we need to keep track of that because we're essentially like putting, chaining these, these segments on the, of the cable together. So at the start of the loop, the bottom of the current segment, if you can consider sort of conceptually the arm, the arm end body to be the previous segment when we're when we're connecting the first of these segments to the, the previous segment, uh, then the bottom of the previous segment would be the position of the, of the arm end. Um, but yes, we we iterate. Oh, my neighbors are making making noise here. Let's let's, ho let's hope it doesn't continue for that long. Uh, anyway, we are we're subtracting the segment height from the bottom of the current segment, and uh, that means that the center of the current segment is essentially bottom. And then we go go half half a segment up. And that gives us the center of it. And then we create the shape. Uh, let's see, do I have everything here properly set up? So we have the height and we have the radius. It's a it's a capsule. We use just the default material. It's not a scene query shape, it's an actual shape. Uh, and then we create the shape. So we get like a, a writable uh, reference here to the to the current cape uh, segment. So we create the shape, and then we do then we do the body. So we have a body description, just one shape. Uh, segment mass is set. Kinematic is false, and here we set the initial transform then to the to the center of the current segment, and uh, essentially no no rotation. Or yeah, there is rotation, but that's that rotation comes from the the rotation of the vehicle itself. So uh, in in local space, there's no rotation, and we create that, and then. Then we set up some some uh, user data. I wonder did I actually do this for the for the arm end stuff? I don't think I did. Oh. Yeah, this stuff is is good to have there because it essentially 
it essentially allows us to um, to hook this into like if you're if you're running like a scene query for example and you want to know oh I hit I hit a rigid body uh, which game object is it does it belong to then, then this is the way you can you can sort of hook it up uh, yeah not super important again throw away code but still it's good to have um, then we have the actor and uh, then we set up the uh, spherical spring joint so quite a bit of stiffness quite a bit of damping uh, damping typically you have to you have to make quite high if you want want, want this to, to like not uh, not flail around especially with something like a cable where you have lots and lots of joints so if we're uh, if this is the first segment so index is zero then we attach it to the arm end rigid body and then the, the other body is the current segments body uh, if not then we just figure out the previous segment then we use that instead and and we do these things with like half heights so minus half a height upwards and half a height downwards same thing here so that we connect essentially like the the, the top end and the bottom end of these segments together and then uh, finally we just add the joint to the scene and then finally we add the magnet at the end of the cable so this is essentially just copy pasted but there are just a few things here that are different so we're now running with a cylinder and we have this this magnet thickness here which we're we are using instead of of the height it's a little wider so 0.8 um and what else i set the mass to a, a little larger like we're using 50 here i think no 20 actually yeah, so this is like 10 times heavier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, and we're creating the magnet rigid body. And then we're setting the user data and we're adding the, the body to the world. And then we're setting up this last, last joint in the very same way that we did previously. Actually, I have forgotten something here. Uh, we need to do need to do this essentially for the for the magnet joint as well, right? So so that, and then I I just put in this this cleanup stuff here. I actually added this target joint here, which, which is currently null. We we don't really do anything with this guy, right? It's still null, but if I don't put it in now, I will I will surely um, forget it later. Okay, so user data, yeah, okay. I think this this guy has just has just those two those two members, yeah. So we can just essentially we can just essentially uh, remove these guys because I think this this thing just sets it by that. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah, it copies it over, yeah. So that that should be fine. That should be fine. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, let's let's give it a try and see what happens. So might just be completely. Hey, look at that. Actually, looks looks to be somewhat working. And uh, if we so we can drive around, and the thing is kind of following along. And if we drive into a wall, it should you know, react to that. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Interesting. Okay. And it, <laughs> it can even hit the, the chassis and make it make it react to that. So I can move the thing around here in local space. And it collides with everything. All right. Let's move it upwards. And we can move it downwards. What's the down button? That was the down button. Yeah, yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, okay. So that seems to work. That's cool. Uh, how about lifting things then? What if we actually got the, the, the magnet working? Let's let's try to do that as well. Shouldn't be super tr tricky. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in here and just change the down key because I think I made a mistake here. It's supposed to be one. 
that's what I had had in mind when I when I did this. So it's gonna it's gonna build and it's gonna it's gonna succeed. Pretty sure about it. Okay, so then we have this toggle magnet thingy, and so basically what we need to do is if we don't have a target joint, we we figure out a target joint. But to know what to connect the target joint to, we have to do uh, a little bit of work. Right. Um, we have to do a little bit of work. And the work we have to do is basically... Uh, we have to do a raycast. So, first of all, if we have a target joint, right, if this is not null, then we essentially know that that we are disabling the the magnet so that's really easy then we can do remove uh, joint and we can do target joint uh, release and then we need to actually null this because otherwise this if if check won't won't actually work correctly next time and then we can write something like magnet oh magnet off and, and a new line there just to make it clear what is happening okay and uh, and 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 if we don't uh, have one of those target joints. That means that we should try to connect the magnet to whatever is straight under the magnet. Right? Um, and so we will we will probably need the, the transform of the magnet. So let's do something like magnet transform here and we have the magnet rigid body get uh, world transform and uh, how long should the ray be? Let's let's do um, maybe ray length. I should probably write it like this. And let's make it like half a meter or something. So it has to be pretty close to to whatever. Can't just like magically suck it up from from above. It has to be actually uh, pretty much touching the object if it wants to lift it. And so then we have something like, uh, oh, ray, ray start, uh, and that would be just, uh, well, that's essentially magnet, magnet transform uh, position, right? And and we have uh, ray end, and that would be. That would be, uh, how do we do this? Maybe we can actually, let's put a, a matrix for three here. We can do magnet local to world transform. And we can initialize this with, with these guys, position. So world transform of the Magnet, and this is actually I want to make it very clear that this is local to world because I think we will actually need the inverse when we create the joint. Um, so uh, we create a, a vector that goes straight down, so minus ray length, and then we multiply it by by this local to world. So that gives us the ray end in world space, right? And that gives us the direction. So ray direction is, um, and that would then be ray end minus ray start uh, normalized. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. If this doesn't work, we can we can probably just deeper draw draw this ray out. But well, I think that should that should work. So then we have raycast result, uh, result, and then we can do m physics scene cast ray. And so the ray starts at ray start, 
uh, it goes in ray direction. Uh, ray length is the length indeed, yes. And uh, result is result, and we probably actually want to only have it. Yeah, there's blocking actor types, so which is a, a mask, so uh, a bit field essentially. So blocking actor types, and this should be just just the the dynamic ones. So physics actor type rigid body dynamic. Uh, I think is is the correct thing to do. Yes, it is a new int thirty two. Cool. So that should be that. And uh, yeah, yeah. Then we can maybe go up here and just grab this one line physics engine. So yeah, we get it from the host. Exactly. So, seeing uh, what we're doing here is we're, we're casting a ray from start in the direction, and we're it's a it's a very short ray, so only half a world unit or half a meter. So essentially, if something is uh, pretty much touching the underside of the magnet, then the ray should hit it, right? And uh, we only hit dynamic rigid bodies. And this if here is uh, if this returns true, then we have a result, and that result can be can be uh, well. The result is stored here in raycast result. So um, raycast result has a hit actor, and we we'll want to get the world transform out of the hit actor as well. So basically, something like like this, but. What, what do we call this? We call it the tar we call it the target joint. So let's call it the target transform, and we'll we'll need we'll need this one as well. One of these guys for the target, the world matrix. And the reason we need the world matrix is that we actually we actually don't, but we need the the inverse of it, right? So we need this is target local to world, target world to local uh, local transform and the reason we do need that is because when we create the joint between these two things when we when we hook up the when we fix the magnet to the target we need to specify the the attachment points in local space of those objects so this would be inverse right Yes, inverse returns a new, a new uh, matrix, and then we need this, the, the same thing for this, but we want want targets instead. Oh, sorry, sorry, magnet rather than target. So now we have magnet world to local, and we have target world to local. So we can do something like a magnet fix point is a result dot. We get the hit point, and hit point is in world space, and that is why we take the magnet world to local transform. Uh, yeah, I'm just double checking my math here, which would give the magnet fixed point in the local space of the magnet. Then we do the same thing for the target. So target fixed point is result dot hit point times target world to local transform. Right? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Now we should be able to just create the target joint, I think. So physics and uh, not physics API, but physics engine uh, create fixed joint. And the first object is the M magnet rigid body and it wants the physics api transform and now we give it the magnet fix point as the position uh, the rotation can be just oop, quaternion identity and uh, then we just copy that for the other one and we 
use target fix point and the actor is result dot hit actor right uh, does that make sense? I think that makes sense. And then M physics scene add joint target joint. So now this would be magnet on. Right? And if we don't actually hit anything, then uh, then we can do something like uh, no target or something like that like it it, 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 it wasn't, wasn't actually touching anything uh huh would this work i wonder wonder if it would work so we have our crane thingy here it's actually just you can just put in a test vehicle there and this is of course it's a little bit tricky to navigate uh, but we can do something like this we can just move it above the thing so we're navigating our our crane <laughs> and you can actually see the whole whole mother vehicle just sort of rocking gently Uh, because this thing is sort of swinging around, which is kind of interesting. Okay, let's move this forward a little bit, and let's move it down a little bit. All right, now we're hitting the thing. Okay, can move it, move it up. Now, if I if I just fire this, we we can see that we're getting the no target, uh, no target thingy here. I, I can't toggle it because it's there's nothing underneath the, the magnet. All right, so moment of truth. Let's try to lift this guy. Uh, maybe a little back and, and maybe a little down. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's swinging around quite <laughs> quite wildly. I'm thinking that I I will probably have to put in a system where we can sort of uh, we can have this cable retract into the arm a little bit, and then you can. Um, then you can like um, put it back out. All right, so that's pretty much on top of the vehicle, right? All right, so boom! Oh man! Oh man! What is gonna happen? Hey! Look at that! Look at that! We are lifting the vehicle, and. <laughs> Even just this one, lifting this one vehicle just makes the mother vehicle rock uh, quite, quite violently. Okay, well this worked actually kind of well. And of course we can still drive around the mother vehicle. And, uh, <laughs> and our scout is, is getting carried along. Uh-huh. Okay, well that was that was uh, that was almost better than I had hoped for. Let's see if, what happens if I just back into this thing. Yeah, yeah, this kind of works, doesn't it? This kind of works. I mean, there's still a lot of work with this left, but but this kind of works. Right? Oh, <laughs> oh man! Oh shit! The whole the whole vehicle is sort of tipping over. Uh, of course, we we don't have to we don't have to do this. We don't have to do this. We can just we can just bring it onto the mother vehicle. All right, here we go. Here we go. A little, little bit forward. A little bit forward. A little bit forward. There we go. And. I'm just, I'm just gonna drop it here. Boo! <laughs> hey, hey, this this works. That's fun. <clears throat> okay, now with this magnet, can we can we lift this that ridiculously heavy 
vehicle thingy there that we weren't able to lift previously. Probably not. It's probably just too big, but let's try anyway. Let's try anyway. All right, this is this is fun. I, I just want to play with this now. I'm going to build, build something. Build some more elaborate level and then play with this. Ah, break, break. Okay. Yeah, so I need to do something about this swinging around. But maybe it's just the fact that this cable is quite long now. And and in the end, it, it will just be, be shorter. Uh, because obviously you can you can move this you can move this arm up and down and and if we just also put in the ability to like retract and extend this cable then it doesn't need to be this long all the time that could be kind of handy uh, all right let's try to put it a bit more in the center maybe that's that's pretty all right all right so what happens what happens can I lift this I can actually, huh? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no, no, I can't. Oh, all right, let's not get carried away. Uh, all right, that, that thing doesn't actually even have a. Yeah, there's not like a. You can see that it, it's, it's just one convex body. That's why that thing is sort of essentially attached in the air. Yeah, I need to be very careful with this. How I, how I lift this thing. Maybe I can actually lift it. Let's see. Ah, oh, it's it's in the air. It's in the air. Come on. Come on. Yeah, we can lift it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Can we? Can we load it on onto the mother vehicle without it just breaking completely? I'm I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared. Oh 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 no 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 no. Yep. Good old physics glitch for you right there yeah I mean <clears throat> I don't think that's necessarily going to be a problem we can tune this still and and like I said this this um, this vehicle this uh, truck that we're now playing around with is not really to scale it's actually way larger than a truck should be uh, let's let's put in a truck number two here and and that truck is actually closer to to what we actually want. It also has better better physics, um, better collisions, as you can see. It has like an actual uh, thing in the back where you can store cargo and, and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think we should be able to lift this. Uh, but I'm getting lost with my coordinates here. Yeah. All right, so now we have the thing in the back of the car, don't we? Don't we, roughly? Yeah, and just lower it down like that. And it's, well, that's pretty, pretty centered. And then we engage the magnet. It glitches a little bit, glitches out just a little bit. And then we can start, start to lift it. Lift, lift, lift. Yeah, this. This works great. This works great. The <laughs> the suspension is getting pretty compressed, though. Uh, I don't think you should you shouldn't be able to to actually move the crane this far from the vehicle. There there are no limits to any of this stuff currently, so that's why you can can move it just how far you want. But yeah, we'll need to actually. We will need to actually figure out some good limits for that. Okay. Well, I call this a resounding success. Actually, this works sort of 
sort of better than I had I had hoped. Uh, I shouldn't <laughs> maybe say things like that. It might be that. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Just chill, chill out, chill out. Come on. Uh, yeah, I think. I think when you're actually driving this thing around, uh, the forces are getting, getting so. Well, so ridiculous that this this thing just sort of freaks out, but. I'm not even sure you're supposed to be able to move around the the the, the vehicle when when you're using the crane. I mean, we, we we have our avatar roll system set up, which is supposed to almost sort of make that. Yeah, and I was <laughs> I was freaking out again. <laughs> no, 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 no. Chill, 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 dude. Chill, my dude. Um, yeah, the avatar roll system that we created earlier is, is kind of that almost like implies that you're not supposed to do that uh, maybe you could at least in theory sort of you could maybe have two players control one of these vehicles and one of them would control the crane and another would be the driver something like that but but yeah that's kind of maybe not really realistic. Let's get rid of that guy. It's probably like, and yeah, now we can see that. Now we should be able to just back up this hill. Uh -huh. But still, I maintain that this worked almost better than I, I kind of thought it would. Uh, really well, actually. And we, and we can still uh, we can we can limit what you can what you can lift with this guy, and we can limit what you can do as you are lifting something. Uh, with it and so I'm not even sure you're supposed to be able to lift like a truck like this maybe just the scout cars and some other cargo that is smaller and lighter but uh, yeah this kind of works so this proves that uh, that this is or at least it might be a viable way to to do a crane like this uh, another way might be to to use what physics calls um, what's it called it actually it calls it is it an armature or no it's not an armature it's a uh, here's the joints articulation yeah articulation is what I'm what I'm actually thinking about an articulation might might be sort of the more correct way of doing it but I think it uh, especially if we're if we want to actually network this stuff then just having this one DOF6 joint which acts as the end of the arm is actually much simpler so I think we'll go with this for now yeah all right with that let's end this episode thanks for watching uh, this was fun now I'm probably just going to play with this for a bit and see what happens. Uh, and yeah, we have, a, we have a vehicle here which hasn't updated its visuals. There we go. Uh, yeah, see you next time. Bye.